basically, we currently have two, not one, two wild horses. So yeah, it's a bit of a long story. We are gonna be getting into that today. For those of you who are not aware, maybe you're not Australian, you don't know, our wild horses are known as Brumbies. So we have two Brumbies. They are well known for being very, very hardy. They've basically chosen to live in all the most extreme locations within Australia. In general, Australia is pretty extreme, but they're, they're really going for it. They live where it's bushfires in summer and 40 degree days. And then in winter, it's freezing cold, snow, the works. Meanwhile, Fletcher's at home, needs his feet done every six weeks, needs a rug on at the sun, at the sign of a drop of rain. Otherwise he completely implodes. Fun fact that I learned just the other day, do you know that most Brumbies are less inbred than the horse you probably have at home? So basically back in October, my good friends went and visited their friends who happened to live in the Victorian high country. What happens is Brumbies tend to get onto their land and they'll often find them ranging out, eating their grass, etc., etc. But my friends actually went out on a ride and while they were out, they ran into a Brumby herd. Now this was not any Brumby herd, it was a paint herd. When you see Brumbies, a lot of the time they are pretty standard coloring wise. So a lot of basic bays, uh, chestnuts. I have seen a few buckskins, like some more interesting colorations, but the paint is definitely a lot rarer and you don't often come across them with paint coloring. There are a lot of theories and like wives tales about where this has come from. I would say the most likely explanation is that once upon a time, some poor farmer lost their paint stallion or mare and they ended up joining a Brumby herd. It would be extremely interesting to get like genetic testing done at some point, because I would love to know what actually makes up these horses. So back to the story, my friends ended up spotting a very, very pregnant mare who was not looking amazing condition wise. And so they decided to try and catch her now. I want to preface this by saying my friends have actually done this professionally at one point in their life. They have recaptured Brumbies, retrained them and rehomed them. So this is not something that just anyone can go and do. If that was not obvious, you could end up hurting the horse. You could end up definitely hurting yourself. Let me tell you from what I have heard, it is not an easy thing to do, even if you are a professional. So they managed to round her up fairly quickly. Now, apparently at first she wasn't super pleased about this as you can probably understand but the minute she had hay at her feet apparently she just chilled out she was like you know what this isn't so bad the way to win any girl over give her food now once they had actually rounded her up they realized that she was like probably a lot further along in her pregnancy than they realized to the point where they were like she's probably going to give birth any day so they very quickly popped her onto the goose neck and brought her down to the property Oh, I just had to run back to the car and grab a jumper because I'm not built like a Brumby, I'm more like a Fletch. But yes, I was shocked. I met the mare who is named Tawny. You would not have guessed that this was a wild horse. Obviously her condition was not great, but she was so freakishly relaxed. I don't know if it was the pregnancy hormones or just the fact that she was relieved to have some food and like some safety and some shelter. Very, very relaxed. Not what I expected at all. The very next morning we wake up and in this yard is the most gorgeous little spotted foal you have ever seen. Now it's an important time to know, not my horse, but I am going to take the credit for naming her. So the baby's name is Magpie, which we thought was very, very fitting with her black and white spots and her Australian heritage. Also known as the Pie because she has that main character energy. It was obviously extremely exciting to have another little baby here at the farm because you guys know I am very clucky for foals, let's be honest. And so is Peach. It's, um, it's a real problem. <laughs> Hey, we're saying hello to the Brumbies today. Look how much these little cuties are great. You're almost as big as your mum. Beautiful. 
happy to you. Don't want you to hit your knee on the gate. Come back. Come back. Thank you. No sassing. You knew what you were going to be doing. I could tell. <laughs> And it definitely was quite eye-opening to see the condition that Tawny was in. She was obviously very, very underweight. She actually had lice. Apparently it is quite an issue for the wild horses. A lot of them can have lice. Um, so she had to be treated for that. She was a bit parasitic as well. Again, pretty common. I just think back to even when Peach was pregnant and when she first had Tic Tac at foot, how hard it was to keep weight on her. And probably out in the wild, you know, there's, there's not much for them during summer. So. It's a pretty tough life for a broodmare out in the wild. It is amazing though, how quickly the horses get into the routine of things. I swear, after like one week, she already knew the sound of a wheelbarrow or the feed bin. It is surprising how quickly they've become pampered ponies. So it has now been six months and Miss Tawny, she has put on a ton of condition. She is now officially free and so is little magpie the most gorgeous beautiful little baby behind me oh my god she is so cute so confident she just wants to be in your space she wants scratches she's like basically being brought into domestication she doesn't realize she's a wild horse so she actually reminds me a lot of tic tac very in your space very confident and it is amazing what a difference a little bit of nutrition can make we are now close to her being six months old and I swear she is pretty much the same height as her own mum so she's gonna overtake her pretty damn quickly I would say she also now has a little friend called Violet who is also the most gorgeous little foal so they have a lovely little herd situation going on at the moment and it doesn't hurt to have two domesticated horses in with the two wild ones to kind of get them into the routine of everything and realize that people are not that bad not that Magpie's faced by people at all, we are officially her scratching posts is the way that she sees it. Now Tawny, she can still be standoffish, but she is one of the most chilled horses I've ever met. Like just nothing gets her riled up. She doesn't run around. She's happy just grazing all day, but she doesn't particularly want you to be in her face cuddling her either. The front end, pretty acceptable. Picks up her front feet pretty well. The hind end, I wouldn't suggest going too close to that. That's a, a work in progress future plans for these two so miss tawny who is behind me right now she is on the smaller side so she is actually going to go and learn to be a pack horse so she's basically will be the hello <laughs> she will be the pack horse for trail rides into the high country when they're going camping and spending a few nights out there once she is weaned from the little pie she will go off and go and have some more handling so that she can learn to do that and as for the little pie well, we don't actually know yet. She is such an awesome little personality. I reckon she'll end up being just that super fun all-rounder. Like she'll go and do a little bit of everything because she's just such a little sweetheart. And fingers crossed she should get to a decent size because she'll have proper nutrition. Maybe even I'll have a ride on her one day, who knows. But for the meantime, her and little Miss Violet are gonna be spending the next few years together growing up into awesome horses. So if you could not tell, I'm fully obsessed with these babies. They are literally so cute i am down here constantly and i'm sure you guys are going to be obsessed with them as well because they are so cute how can you not be but you know how quickly time goes three years will go in a flash like it has with tic tac so i'll definitely keep you updated on everything that happens with these guys and what they end up doing bye guys <laughs>